one of the commonest concerns that patients with Parkinson's express is, doctor, is my memory going to become affected by this disease? And it's a very difficult question to answer, but if we look at the research, the truth is, yes, we see memory problems as being very much part of Parkinson's disease. At the time when a patient is first diagnosed, at least a quarter of them, if you sat them down and did some pen paper testing of their memory, maybe take an hour to do a proper assessment, you'll find at least a quarter of those people are actually falling into a range where their memory is performing in what we call mild cognitive impairment. That is to say you're not demented, but you're certainly not normal. And in actual fact, you're down a sort of statistical um, amount on what you should be for your background age and level of education. So we see that really in people who are just at the start of their journey in about a quarter of those patients. And interestingly, it does appear to be that's a risk factor for those people who will go on and get dementia. Now the truth is that um, there are a lot of other factors that come into play. Do you have other diseases that might impact on the brain? Have you had strokes in the past? Do you have high blood pressure that may have caused damage on the brain? Are you someone who's diagnosed in your late 70s compared to someone in your early 40s? We know that the rates of, if you like, decline are much more rapid the um, later you diagnose. So if you're an older patient, you're more likely to get to a point sooner than if you're a younger patient. So when people say, oh, I've heard a figure that after 20 years, eight out of 10 Parkinson's disease patients will have dementia. Well, that applies to the average. So the truth is, if you're a patient in your 40s, I don't think there's any chance that you're likely to dement uh, in the next 20 years. I think you're going to do very well. You may get some impairments, but I don't think it's a fast, hard rule. But it is true that we see patients who have got problems with their memory and it's an increasing issue. And when it goes on, we do see dementia and Parkinson's. The pattern of memory problems that we see in Parkinson's is a little bit different to what we see in Alzheimer's. In Alzheimer's disease, we see that sort of pattern of forgetting and losing, what we call an amnestic pattern. In Parkinson's, we can see those problems, and they're certainly there, and in more advanced cases, they are prevalent. But the earlier problems we see in Parkinson's and thinking and memory really relate to things like executive function, so planning and working memory. Can I work out how much change I need? Can I structure my day? Can I do those three things you wanted me to do in the right order? And also what we call visuospatial problems. And this we test for in the clinic by doing things like asking patients to copy diagrams or draw pictures. But in real life we see patients who are maybe struggling with things like driving and their ability to judge distances and how fast they're moving and whether they're in the middle of the road or veering becomes impaired and actually exaggerated uh, when the light conditions go down overnight. So there's a slightly different pattern we see in the memory problems of Parkinson's compared to Alzheimer's. Now in terms of treatment, what can people do? Well, as I mentioned a moment ago, the truth is there are other things that can impact on your brain and make it work badly. High blood pressure, cholesterol, all of the things that you'll be familiar with, smoking, too much alcohol, it's a, a, an established list. In terms of, if you like, clawing back the advantage, I think there's definitely room there for brain training. And although I have no shares or no um, uh, conflict of interest to declare, I would generally recommend online software such as lumosity.com or Brain HQ. We've incorporated some of this in our research work looking at um, improving memory and thinking in Parkinson's disease. Of course, that involves effort, a bit like exercise and physiotherapy, but patients will say to me, well, isn't there just a tablet that I can take from helping my memory? And the answer is generally not. So in patients with Parkinson's disease dementia, we do have evidence to support that actually the drugs that we use from the Alzheimer's patients can be beneficial in Parkinson's. And not only do they help with things like memory, but they can also help with things like hallucinations. Logically, you would think, well, okay, what happens if we treat people with those drugs before they get demented? What if we treat them during the stage when they have mild cognitive impairment as part of their Parkinson's? And those trials have been done, and actually they showed no benefit whatsoever. So what you have there essentially is a risk of taking the tablets and getting side effects and no potential for benefits. So I think we're at a stage at the moment with um, memory decline in Parkinson's where we're saying to patients, look, not every patient 
patient will get these problems, but what you should do is to invest in your own health, be active in the mind, and hopefully taking on other things like positive strategies such as exercise um, and, and making sure that your medications are exactly right for you seems to be the best advice we can give at this time.